I mean, that is the worst radio ever. Oh, uh, should I play this fantasy guy? What do you guys think? Like, nobody gives a crap. All right. Uh, correct score. This one is popular, which I don't love. Um, but it's, it's the one that first came to mind. Here's what I'm starting. I'm starting Nuggets four games to two at plus 400. Man, it feels like everybody's making this prediction, but I, I think it makes perfect sense. Now, if 4-1 was an option, maybe I would have gone there, but I'm going to start four games to two. I am going to sit the sweep. Uh, Seamus McGee mentioned to us, this is the one that, that would hurt them the most. There are people betting on the Nuggets to sweep. And guys, there are some sports books. I was shocked at the price of 4-0. I thought you would get much more value than what's out there. So I guess it does show that people are betting into that. I am uh, sitting a nugget sweep, and now I am going to cut Heat in seven. Not only pushing it to seven, but winning in Denver, uh uh-uh. Don't see that one happening. Uh, There's a reason that that one is plus 950. I'm going to start nugget sweep a little bit better number but yeah i was surprised it wasn't like a much better number than the four two but i just think after watching that Lakers series i think they can sweep they've got the home court advantage and they just have another gear with Jokic. like even if they're down that guy can just take over a game and they can find a way um i just think it's gonna be tough for this heat team so sit is uh nuggets four two at four to one and cut Heat 4-3, I just don't think that's happening. It's plus 950, so I'm cutting it. It's, I, yeah, I would be shocked. <laughs> Not much to say right. there. <laughs> I think we're all in agreement here. Uh, I've got start mm. Nuggets four games to two at 4-1, to one, sit Nuggets in a sweep, and cut Heat winning this in seven. One other thing I would add, too, and this is more generic advice, and I know I've said this more than a couple of times, but – don't be afraid to pick the road team in these series bets to say clinch the series or something like that. Because I I think we always, you know, operate under the assumption that the home team is always going to hold serve in in key spots, or it's not going to be a sweep because Denver can't possibly win two games in Miami. Well, absolutely that can happen. You know, Denver is a very good basketball team. So I, I look at this and go, you know, nuggets at four games to two, I think there's some value there because they were clinch in Miami. So uh, there's something to be said for that. Especially when you're talking about Miami, what we saw in this last series was downright historic. Uh, Lev Akabas, uh, forgive me if I'm mispronouncing the name, but he brought up a really interesting stat here. The Miami Heat hit 58% of their wide open threes in the Eastern Conference Finals versus the Celtics. 58% of their wide open threes. That's the highest percentage any team has shot on wide open threes in any series in the last 10 years. This is largely why the Heat knocked off the Celtics. It's not necessarily because the Celtics are not as talented as we thought, or yeah, I mean, their defense could have been a lot better, but it wasn't so bad to the point of absurdity Instead, it was the Heat, whenever they had an opportunity to knock down a wide open three, meaning that there's at least six feet between the nearest defender and the shooter, they were making them. And they weren't making Mm -hmm. them in the regular season. And 58% is a really, really high number. Let's add some perspective to that. The Nuggets made 40.7% of their wide open threes in their series sweep against the Lakers. That's sent lower than what the Heat did. And the Nuggets got the sweep. So 40.7%, which is not a bad number at all. That was more than enough uh, for Denver to knock off the Lakers. But what the Heat did, and still needing seven games in which to do it, that to me is fascinating. As for Miami's other series in terms of their wide open three-point shooting, 42%, 38%. And then in the regular season, it was 37%. So they were shoot more than 20 percent better in that seven game series against boston than during the regular season now look they do have some good shooters out there they were fourth and wide open three-point shooting in last Mm -hmm. year's regular season so it's certainly possible that this is more like what we should be accustomed to seeing for miami but 58 percent is a really, really high number. And I just don't know how you can expect that to continue in a grueling series against the Nuggets. 
to me, they are due for regression and mm -hmm. it could come suddenly. I know you mentioned you're looking at over on Jokic points. What else do you have your eye on for tonight? I think this series plays out pretty decent for Aaron Gordon. Just because when you think about the Lakers series where he really got minimalized, that's a lot of bulk that he was dealing with. And Miami's probably stuck between, do you start the normal lineup that you have been where you're really small? Or at some point, are they really going to give Kevin Love more time? And one thing Aaron Gordon is really good at, well, a couple things. Great cutter. And Miami is a smart defense, but he's also a guy that's willing to cut, seal in the paint, and then be able to just bully. So if he has Max Struess on him or it's Caleb Barton or whoever it ends up being, he has no qualms getting the ball either at the elbow and just bullying someone down. Like, as much as we think about the cool passing and the three-point shooting from the Denver Nuggets, they're also a physical team that'll say, screw you and take you down to the post if you're a small team. Jokic will do it. Aaron Gordon will do it. Jamal Murray will do it. So that's something that I like his points, rebounds, assist number, especially if he's going to have the high minutes load because he's going to be on Jimmy a good amount of the time. Maybe that limits his rebounds a little, but his assists have been going up seven potential assists in the last two games of that series, and his uh, assist prop is like two and a half, so they're not banking on him to do a whole lot there. Early favorite are not usually worth trusting. Um, I think there's plenty of value in, in maybe looking at a guy like Aaron Judge now, who, you know, I, I think once everyone starts to flood to Shohei Otani, he has 18 home runs. He clearly uh, has been, uh, I think, the best hitter in the American League. I mean, look at the way that the Yankees are playing right now. They're playing very good baseball, despite the fact that they have a lot of players out. They're getting three players back off the injured list for this Dodgers series. I think the Yankees are a team worth investing in. And I think, like, by comparison, I think Aaron Judge is definitely going to be in the conversation to win another MVP. I know that you might say, okay, well, the voters are going to give it to Otani because they had to give it to Judge last year. I don't know, man. If Judge hits 50, 60 home runs again and the Yankees are even better or they make the playoffs, I, I mean, I think you have to give this guy an MVP again, and I think that he's definitely a player. And in the National League, I mean, Acuna's been great, but Matt Olson continues to lead the way in the home run department for them. Uh, he is top three in baseball in home runs. Spencer Strider has been unbelievable. So I think there's a lot of players that make the Atlanta Braves a good team. Yes, Ronald Acuna is hitting 324. Yes, he, you know, he, he could definitely compete for the Triple Crown. Uh, and if he did win the Triple Crown, I think it would be a lock. But I don't think it's going to be boring by any means. I think there's plenty of players on his own team that could push him. And then when you look at a team like maybe the Dodgers that could get hot, you know, I could see Mookie Betts being in the conversation again. Or, or even Max Muncie who's had an amazing season. Uh, so I, I'm not ready to say – it's over. I'm not ready to say that, uh, you know, it's going to be boring and Otani's going to run away with it. I do, I will admit, like, and I'll agree with you, it did feel going into the season as if you, you sort of knew the voters were going to give Otani MVP because he didn't get it last year. So I do worry mm -hmm. about that. It is a human award after all. There will be voters, human voters voting on this, but I, I don't know. I, I think that there's, I don't think it's over by any means.